This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to create tables, but you can't just start building tables. You have to plan for your table. And to plan for your table, you have to be planning out your database. You have to know what the purpose of your database is, and you have to have an organization and have something drawn out ahead of time. Let me show you somewhat of an example. What we have here is just a relationship window, and this is a little beyond the scope of building tables, but it's something that you need to know in order to determine what's going to be stored inside of your table. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that information is not duplicated. So in this particular database, they're storing customers, the customer's orders, and then they'll be printing invoices. And so in the customer table, they store all of the information about the customer. But in the orders table, the only thing they store about the customer is the customer ID. Because the customer ID is also found over here. This field is also customer ID. So the customer ID field is found in the customers table and in the orders table. And what that does is it allows these two tables to talk to one another. So one of the things that you have to be planning for is what are you going to store in your database how are you going to store it? Because you don't want redundant information. I don't want to repeat anything on the order table about my customers, except I need their customer ID to find all of the customer information. So for an order, if I want to know the name of the customer, the customer ID would go over to the customer's table and would find the last name and the first name of that customer for me. So when you're designing your tables, no duplicate information except the one field that relates the two tables. And in this example, it's customer ID. Now, for the invoices table, the way the invoices ID, excuse me, identify the order is through the order ID. So the order ID is on the invoices table. Order ID is also on the orders table. And those two fields then, or that same field, I should say, connects this, the two tables. The only way I'm going to find information about the orders is come to the order table. Based on the order ID, the invoices table can identify all of the information about the order. So that's just kind of a big picture about how you have to draw out and design your database in order for you to have properly designed tables. And it's very, very essential to properly design your tables. Very, very essential. Well, let me show you what our database is going to look like. It's pretty simple. We don't have too much going on here in our database, but we're going to build this employee table. And our employee table is going to have the employee ID field, last name, first name, email address, the phone number, the year the employee was hired, the department they work in, and the state that they work in. Because in this example, the offices are in five different states around the United States. So as you take a look at this table, one of the things that you want to think about is which field is going to be the identifier for the employees. So that when you need to refer back to this table, you're going to use one field. And for this example, it's called a primary key field. And for this example, the primary key is going to be the employee ID number. Now here's why this is important. Because when we build a second table, when we build our table that we're going to call projects, when we build the projects table, we don't want to repeat the information about the employees, but we want to know which employees are working on which project. And so we have the employee ID field in the projects table so the two tables can talk to one another. These are the type of things you want to be thinking about when you're building your tables. So most importantly, no redundant information, no repeated information from one table to the other other than the one field that connects those two tables. And you definitely want the one field that connects the two tables. That's exceptionally important. OK, let me hit Escape here, because I want to get out of this area and close that. Now, we're back into Access. And in Access, let's take a look at how we actually then can build a table. 
Once you've determined what your table is going to store, you can then go in and build the table. On your tabs, my, um, my ribbons are collapsed right now. I'm just going to double click on Create so my ribbons are available. And on the Create tab, now I have on the Create ribbon ways that I can build tables. So here's my group right here for tables. If you simply choose Table, you're going to be creating a blank table in Datasheet view. That's not my most favorite option, but it's definitely an option. I prefer to build a table in Design view. That might just be because it's been around the longest and I'm the most comfortable with it. But what we're going to do in Design view, the same information can happen in Datasheet view without any trouble at all. So when you start building your tables, field names are extremely, extremely important. Here's table rule number one. I call it ABC123. You only want to use alpha and numeric entries inside of your table names. No spaces. No spaces, no underscores, nothing other than the 26 letters of our alphabet and the one, two, three, any number that's out there. So as we start building this, what we're going to do is to start naming them. And remember, our first field was employee ID. So I type in employee ID, and then I hit my tab key, and it gets into this area called data types. Data types are going to be covered in a different part of, in a different lesson. And so we're not going to focus really that essentially on data types right now. But does it make sense that this would be a text field? Absolutely. Now, the description field is completely optional. It'll help you um, identify what's going on. Look in the bottom here under Help, right down here in Help. It's optional. But what'll happen is if you type a description, it'll also display in the, state, in the status bar when this field is on a form. So this is only going to show up if it's on a form. And so for many of us, we don't even need a description. But sometimes you will want a description. Hitting tab, it'll go on down to the next line. And on the next line, I want last name. Now, notice what I'm doing here. Because you can't have spaces and we're not going to use underscores, I always capitalize when a new word starts. And that's just something that I picked up from Microsoft along the way because they tend to do that as well. I know my data type is going to be short text and I don't have to select it because it's the default. I don't want a description, so I'll just use the down arrow. What's happening here, let me collapse my toolbar to get my tools out of the way. What was happening is the scroll bar is just scrolled. Employee ID is still there. So now we have first name. And first name is also short text, so we'll just arrow down. We want email address. Now, email address may not be a short text field. It may be a different type of a field, such as a hyperlink. Because hyperlink fields allow you to actually click on the item and it'll take you to wherever it is that you want to go. For this example, though, we're going to go ahead and leave it just good old-fashioned short text. And then we have the phone field. Folks, the phone field is not going to be a number field because the phone field is going to have dashes in it, and dashes are not numbers. So we'll go ahead and leave it short text as well. Year hired. Whoops, I forgot to capitalize my Y. Year hired. Well, I can't seem to get that Y capitalized, can I? Let me try that again. Year hired. Now, year hired is going to be a number field, or is it going to be a date and time? It depends on how you want to establish that field. We'll go ahead and choose date and time. After year hired, we have department. And let me arrow down. We have the state. And those are the fields that I want to develop. Now, if I change my mind, look, I can right click, and I have cut and copy, I have insert rows, and I have delete rows. So if you decide you don't want something, you simply delete that row. If you remind yourself, oh, I really did want that, right click, you can insert whatever it is, right? You can make it happen. You're hired was a date field. OK. What if they're in the wrong order? If I click on state, just click and let go, and then rest my mouse on that little box, Drag, look how you can reorder. Just click, hold, don't let go, and drag, and you can, move, you can move items around. So now I have created my new employee table. I want to be sure to save it. So in the top left-hand corner is the Save button or Control-S, and we'll call it employee. Now, some people do this. They call it a tuple or a table, TBL, employee. Some people do that so that any time they see the name of an object, they know whether it's a table, a query, a form, or report. It's 100% up to you what you would like to do for your naming convention. I'm going to go ahead and put TBL employee, and then we'll say OK. And now what we've done is we've created our table. 
access is just warning us, you know, you might have made a mistake. You don't have a primary key defined. I don't want to do that right now. I'm going to say no. However, if you do say yes, what's going to happen is if you say yes, it'll create a field for you. I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to go ahead and say no. So you can see now, there's my table named employees, and I have all of the fields that I determined are going to be necessary for my exceptional access database design. Let's pause for a pop quiz. Which statement best describes access tables? A, tables are the building blocks of access requiring serious design consideration. B, tables are questions asked to request specific data from the database. C, tables are great for formatting data with colors and fonts. D, tables are designed only to display and print database data. The only proper answer here, A, tables are the building blocks of access and they do require serious design consideration. So when you are designing your database, be sure you're following proper table design rules. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.